This is Valerie coming to you from Southern Italy. I just wanted to touch base. How, are, how is everybody doing, first of all? I hope that you are all uh, staying safe and healthy wherever you are. Uh, here in Southern Italy, it's a little rainy and windy today, uh, so we don't wanna go outside uh, anyway. Um, I did send an update uh, about what the situation is in Italy as we move into phase two of the quarantine. Uh, you can find that um, here on the Facebook page or on the main um, internationalliving.com website. Uh, but I didn't come on to talk to you about the quarantine or about the virus. I think I'll get a lot of that um, as it is all, all day and all night. Um, I think everyone's getting a little bit tired. I know I am of hearing it constantly. Uh, so I don't want to talk about the quarantine. I want to talk about after the quarantine. Um, the daydreams that we still are all having about moving to Italy and um, the next step to be able to do that. I know it's not one of those things that you can do in a day or a week or a month. It takes a lot of planning. And so those of you who are considering uh, moving here to Italy for your retirement, it's something that's gonna be an ongoing process uh, regardless of what the current situation is. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what it's gonna be like um, if you do move to Italy um, and uh, the kind of choices that you'll have uh, for your life here. Um, Italy has a wide uh, range of terrain. The geography here right, goes from the mountains to rolling hills to the sea coast. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. Um, if you've been to one of the international living conferences or you're planning on going to one, the first thing that they talk about is to profile yourself. So to determine where you wanna live, you have to take an objective and realistic you or a little look inside um, at your lifestyle and what kind of things you want, what kind of amenities, what kind of activities you want to engage in, what type of atmosphere you want for your um, home while you're um, overseas, your kind of that lifestyle that you want to be able to enjoy. <clears throat> so take a look at the type of social life or the cultural life that you want to have and what your budget is, um, whether you want to be in a city, if you want to be in a smaller town, if you want to be um, in the countryside or right on the sea. Those are things to all kind of take into account as you're looking um, where you want to live um, with this move to Italy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, there's a really cool website that I like to look on. It's called tutitalia.it. Um, it compiles lots of statistics, all different kinds of things that um, break things down by region uh, across Italy. And one of the things that it breaks down is where the foreigners live in Italy. So registered residents who are foreign residents here in Italy, you can look and see in any region how many foreign residents there are. So if it's important to you to have an expat community around you, you if you want to see how many other um, North Americans or English speaking foreigners live in a certain region, you can find that on this website and it's kind of an interesting um, look at uh, where people live, where people choose to live. The By far, the biggest number of foreigners uh, live in the Lombardia region. Um, there's no surprise, that's where Milan is, that's where a lot of the industry is, so um, the number of people that have moved there for work reasons, um, it's not surprising that that's where the majority of Americans and Canadians and Brits um, as foreigners are living. But um, in terms of for retirement. Um, I think the majority of people tend to cluster more in the center of Rome. Um, so then the next more um, populous region, let's say the percentage of um, foreigners that are living um, in the Lazio re region, and that's where Rome is located. So of course, Rome is the eternal city. It's um, the internationally uh, well-known and culturally rich city. And so it's no surprise that a great number of people would choose to live in the city of Rome. Um, in fact, there's, in the Lazio region, 11.6% of the population are um, foreign. And there's more than 3,000 Americans. This site really gives you a lot of detail of uh, the, these registered residents that are living there. So over 3,000 Americans, um, almost 500 Canadians, more than 4,500 um, from the UK are living in the Lazio region. Um, and so that's a kind of an interesting look if you want to be able to um, have an expat community around you or know how many English speakers live in any uh, given area. 
Um, not everyone, of course, wants to have an expat community. A lot of people might want to be in a smaller town and be part of their community, and that's um, a good tool to be able to use for that as well. Um, but Lazio has a lot more than just Rome. So Rome is an amazing city. I love going to Rome. I love to spend time there. I wouldn't personally want to live there myself. Um, it's very expensive and it's chaotic, um, but it's got a lot to offer. So if you want to live where you can be in reach of Rome, uh, but you don't want to be in the city itself, there's a lot of places in that region of Lazio uh, where you can be in a smaller town, in a smaller city, but you can still catch a train and be in the center of Rome in an hour or so. Um, so you get kind of the best of both worlds. And the cost of living when you go outside of the city of Rome is a lot less as well. So Lazio might be one of the places that you would be interested, one of those places that you might want to look to be able to enjoy sort of of, um, all of those amenities of Rome itself and then still be a part of a community um, in a smaller city. So if you go to the north of Rome, what, an area that I really like is around Lake Bracciano. Uh, there's this really uh, pretty little um, freshwater lake and there's a couple towns that are very uh, quaint that sit on the shore of this lake and there's buses and trains that get you to Rome in an hour but then you're in this little world where it's laid back and it's a quiet and um, slower pace of life. Another place would be Viterbo. Viterbo is a beautiful medieval city. It's got towers and um, that web of streets, but it's still large enough to be active. It is a provincial capital, so um, there's quite a bit going on. There's a university, there's a military installation there, so um, there's quite a bit happening in Viterbo, but you can still get to Rome uh, very easily. And um, another advantage of being in Viterbo is that it's a city of hot springs. So it's this sort of like that fountain of youth, perhaps. You can go and soak in hot springs and get a lot of curative things, uh, spot treatments and such uh, around Viterbo. And then there's quite a few towns um, scattered all over northern Lazio that are very affordable. Um, and it still then puts you kind of in reach of the sea. So if you're in that area that's north of Rome, um, you can get to the city, you can get to all of these other towns, but you can also get to the Mediterranean coast uh, fairly easily from towns like um, Viterbo, Supri, um, Caprarola. So that's a nice option. Um, so Lazio would be one place that I would recommend um, people might want to look for retirement if you really want to be in that area of Rome. Um, the next most populous place for foreigners, of course, is Tuscany. Tuscany is that dreamy land of rolling hills and grapevines and all of that picture postcard that people have, um, I think, of quintessential Italy. It's no wonder that it's so popular. Um, if you, It really is important to you to have other foreigners around, to have an expat community. Tuscany is a great choice because you're going to find lots of people from all over the world living there. Um, Florence, of course, is the cradle of the Renaissance and the most popular city. But there's Pretty much any town that you go in Tuscany, you're going to find some foreign residents. Um, I think that there's a lot uh, to offer there. Uh, Tuscany has a lot. There's just every town is beautiful in its own way. Um, you have, I don't know, it, it's a dreamland, I think, for many people. It's what people think of when they have Italy uh, is mentioned to them. The thing that comes to their mind is Tuscany. It's just that well known and that um, this imagery that comes from Tuscany um, is really what a lot of people dream of. So um, you can go outside of the city of Florence and outside of that main um, center part that's so expensive um, and find some really nice cities that might be good alternatives like Arezzo. I think Arezzo is a beautiful uh, Renaissance city, Renaissance and medieval city um, that gets overlooked a lot. Um, and there's a lot of gems, a lot of um, archaeological uh, sites in the area, but there's also it's beautifully architecturally. It's um, full of artwork. The streets, it's lively. Um, it's a nice uh, option, I think, if you want that kind of ambiance that you would get in Florence or Siena, um, but you don't want to be in those main tourist cities. 
Luca is another beautiful place that you might want to consider. That's over on the western part of Tuscany. Luca is completely surrounded by um, its medieval walls still. And those walls have now been turned into a park. And so you can walk all the way around um, the city of Luca on, on top of the old medieval walls. And it's just a really interesting place. It's got a nice quality of life there. Um, so that might be another option um, if you're looking for some place in Tuscany that's not quite um, either is expensive or quite as touristy as Florence or Siena. Um, if you go to the east of uh, Tuscany, there's Le Marche. And Le Marche holds a very special place in our hearts. We love Le Marche. It's one of those um, idyllic places, I think. We lived there for two years in southern Le Marche, and we found the Marchegiani to be very welcoming. Um, we really lights the quality of life that you find in Le Marche. Um, they call it, the region themselves, they call it all of Italy in one region because it does have sort of everything encapsulated into that one region. It has mountains, it has the hills, it has wine country, it has a lot of sea coasts on the Adriatic Sea. Um, it has castles everywhere. It's got, really, it is sort of all of Italy in that one region. Um, it's got the similar dreamy landscapes and um, excellent wines that you would find in Tuscany. They're different vintages and um, it's really interesting to be able to go around the different wine countries and sample those wines um, that aren't very well known yet. Um, people are very friendly uh, in Le Marche. And we found that we really felt like part of the town. We were in a city, but we really made friends easily there. We were in um, Ascoli Piceno, which is a travertine city. It's um, very elegant. It's a place that very few people have heard of for some reason. We just kept walking around going, why don't people know this? It's such a beautiful place. Um, the whole city is just paved in travertine, so it gleams like it's marble. Uh, so it's one of those places that's really special. Um, so you might want to check that out. It's also level. So if you don't want to be in a hill town where you have to struggle to go up and down uh, the streets to get your groceries and uh, get around town, it's a level city and people get around by bicycle or you can walk the entire Centro Storico um, on foot very easily. It's also only a half hour from the Adriatic. So if you want to be able to get to the beach, uh, it's very easy. There's trains and buses that run all the time from Ascoli to the seacoast um, to the San Benedetto or Porto d'Ascoli beaches. Um, and then there's art cities like Yesi, um, Urbino, which was built the ideal city. It's uh, got the gorgeous ducal palace uh, with its spires that stick up on its hill and it's a university town. So Urbino is a really lively city as well. Um, there's one really nice thing about Le Marche as well is that if you want to be in a city, but you also want to be on the sea, there's a couple places there that you can do that. Um, they're not those beach resorts that close up um, outside of the summer season, like so many places. Uh, so you could go to Senegalia um, or Pesaro or Fano, and you can find um, a seafront city with a lot of life that's year round and not just a summer resort and still be able to live right on this um, so Le Marque might be a place that you would want to look. Going back right into the center south of Tuscany, that um, La Marque abuts with Tuscany as well as with Umbria. And Umbria is uh, rural at heart, um, and yet it's also uh, very convenient and um, a lot of art towns in Umbria as well. It's called the Green Heart of Italy, and it's not just um, because of the ruralness of it, but it really is at the very heart of Italy. It's actually the um, geographic center of the country. So if you want to be in a place that gets you, uh, gives you access north and south, if you want to be able to have good access to travel around, you want to be able to go into Tuscany, you want to be able to go down to Rome or Lazio, you want to be able to get around easily uh, and see a lot and be just right, you're literally in the center of Italy if you choose Umbria. Um, there's a lot of expats that have chosen Umbria um, very quietly. Um, it's not, it doesn't gain tons of attention as an expat destination, but there are a lot of expats in all of the various towns around Umbria. Um, those who want to have a laid back lifestyle, um, but still have access to everything. There's an airport in Perugia. 
And Perugia itself is a medieval city. It's got a lot of things going on. It's the largest city in Umbria. So if you want a city life that has some nightlife and it has some things happening uh, and cultural events, then that would be a good choice. Um, Perugia also has a big university. So um, it's got that sort of youthful thing going on as well. Um, but a lot of people choose those smaller towns. They want to be uh, more in that kind of rural country type of living, but be in a, in a pretty town. So there's a ton of them to choose from. Um, Orvieto is one that might be the best known in terms of hill towns. Um, sitting on its bluff, it's very dramatic looking and it's very beautiful the way it gleams up on this bluff. Um, and it's fairly level once you ride the funicular up to the old town. Uh, there's a lot happening there. Um, Assisi is probably the most famous town uh, in Umbria. But um, my personal favorite uh, is Città delle Piave. I think that Città delle Piave is a very elegant town um, that not many people know about yet. Uh, it kind of unfurls on a ridge and it has a lot of things there that you wouldn't necessarily expect for a smaller town. Um, there's a lot of artwork, there's a lot of monuments, there's um, things happening almost all year round. Um, and it just has uh, people there are very proud of their community and they put on a lot of events. Um, and it's also very close to Tuscany, so you have that access again. Um, and it's not very steep, that's a nice thing too. Um, one other benefit to Umbria is there's some golf courses. If golfing is important to you, you'll find some good golf courses in Umbria. Um, there's a lot of walking paths. So um, avid hikers and walkers will like that you can walk right along the Tevere, the Tiber River, um, or there's the paths that St. Francis crossed. Um, and so there's quite a few, there's a good network of trails uh, in Umbria as well. Um, and then one of my favorite places, honestly, is Puglia. So uh, Puglia is one of those places that doesn't get a lot of attention. It's just starting to really gain more press and publicity um, for holidays. But uh, it's the heel of Italy. It's that sexy stiletto. And um, I think they really know how to live in Puglia. It's a place that people are exuberant. They're full of life. Uh, they are very embracing in Puglia. So if you want to be in a place where you can feel like you're a part of your community, where you feel like you can make friends quickly and really integrate uh, with the Italian um, community that you live in, then Puglia is a really great choice because the Pugliese love people. They love to be around each other. They love to um, put on parties. They love to celebrate. They love to eat. Um, and it's just like you go out for a walk and, oh, hi, it's a, it, it's a big event to run into someone. Even if you see them every day, they act like they haven't seen you for a month. They're just very exuberant. Um, I also think that it's a great choice if you don't like um, cold winters. It's the mildest climate on mainland Italy uh, for winters. So if you want to have a milder type of uh, winter climate, that would be a really good choice. They do get very hot summers, though. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is it might be a little bit um, hot and humid in the summer. Um, it also has two sea coasts, though. So if it's important to you to be near the sea, um, Puglia is a great choice because you're never very far from the water no matter where you choose to live. Um, there's several different places, several different zones. There is a, an, a kind of uplands, mountainous area in the northern part of Umbria. But the majority of it is pretty level. There's some hills um, called the Valle d'Itria. And so the towns in the Valle d'Itria are uh, really interesting. And that's an area that draws quite a few expats uh, because they're so beautiful, because of the ambiance, and because they're not very far from the sea. Um, they're these generally whitewashed, almost Greek-looking towns uh, in, Umbri in um, Puglia. Uh, so that might be an area that you would want to consider, um, especially if you do want to have some other expats around. Towns like uh, Martina Franca, which is very ornate, um, very up, it's kind of the most upscale town in the Valle d'Itria. Uh, Ostuni, which is called the White City, and it's this round city. It's completely circular as it winds up to the pinnacle of the town, uh, whitewashed, and it's just barely inland from the sea. It's only 20 minutes to get to the coast from Ostuni, and there's a lot going on there. It has a lot to offer. There's some excellent restaurants and some excellent things going on uh, in Ostuni, but really all of the towns of the Valle d'Itria are nice options for retiring. 
Um, if you want to be in a city and you still want to have a lot of cultural things going on, Leche would be uh, a great choice. Leche is this um, riot of Baroque city. The entire city is done up in Baroque um, adornment and it's just stunning to see, to walk around and it just makes you happy to look at it. It's just so over the top done in Baroque that um, you can't help but smile as you walk around and look at all of these monuments. Um, and I also think that one of the great things about living or even visiting, but especially living in Puglia, um, my own opinion, Puglia has the best food in Italy. I'm convinced of it. Every time we go there, it's not very far from our region of Basilicata to go into Puglia. Every time we go there, we are amazed at what they do um, in, with cuisine there. It's always a little bit neglected. They take all of that fresh produce that they grow in their very mild climate, uh, and they turn it into works of art and amazing, amazing dishes. So um, the seafood is some of the best. They are nothing boring about the way they prepare seafood in Puglia, um, but they can take humble things like legumes and greens and make amazing dishes out of them. So that's just my own opinion, but I think Puglia offers the very best food in Italy. Um, they also have excellent wines, of course. Uh, so that is a really great choice. Um, I think Puglia is one of the overlooked places that um, is actually still very affordable. Uh, so that would be somewhere else that you might want to consider for retiring here. So I hope that this has been helpful. I um, hope this gives you some ideas. It keeps you daydreaming in these days of uh, sort of drudgery right now. Um, keep up your uh, plans to move forward uh, because this isn't going to last forever and your dreams of moving overseas will come true. So you take care. I hope you're healthy. Uh, stay well wherever you are. And if you have questions, please be sure to send them my way.